now let's move on to tech where Arjun joins us from Turin where he spoke to the Applied Intuition CEO and co-founder uh, at the Italian Tech Week. So Arjun, it is day three. What do you have for us? Well, Ritika spent a lot of yesterday talking to the venture capital industry about how they're approaching investing into AI with sky-high valuations and where they see the future uh, and value occurring. Today, I'm speaking to a lot of players who are actually applying artificial applications, and one of those is applied intuition, as you said. Now, one of the big areas so far for AI has been autonomous driving. We've seen that in some of the assisted driver systems in cars. But we're also seeing it with companies like Waymo, who are putting driverless cars in the form of robo taxis on the roads in parts of the United States uh, as well. Now there has been a hype for many many years that you know we'd have driverless cars everywhere by now but that obviously hasn't come to pass at this point. So I caught up with the Applied Intuition CEO Kassar Yunus to ask a little bit about his view on where we're at right now with driverless cars and where they're going. Let's listen in. We work with vast majority of the global automotive uh, 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 car companies. The We also do operating systems, so the software that makes your consumer experience feel you know, really good, like uh, it's, it's intuitive, it's fast, it's easy to use. And then the background of all of that stuff, which is the in-cabin experience and the autonomy experience, all the tooling that, that, the, that the companies use. Yeah. Can you talk to me about the roadmap for autonomy? Because yeah. you speak to a lot of the car makers and they talk about their ADAS yeah. systems. And they say we're bringing more autonomy to the car. Yeah. Then you look at companies like Tesla and yeah. particularly the Chinese EV makers yeah. who are saying, well, we're going to bring vast levels of autonomy and we're going to launch robo taxis. Yeah. And there are robo taxis operating in, in parts of the US, yeah, yeah. in China, etc. as well. So when it comes to uh, driverless, what is the kind of pathway? What's happening in the market right now? Yeah, I mean, it is an exciting time to be in self-driving. After 10 years of failed promises <laughs> and false starts, it's kind of like imagine if we were doing an F1 race and all the cars never started and like one or two puttered away. It wasn't a very exciting race. Now everyone's down the straightaway and everything's humming. And what that means is in America and other places, parts of the world, uh, you can get in a fully self-driving vehicle. Just to separate a little bit for the kind of audience at home, you have the full self-driving stuff, which is like a robo-taxi, where you get in, there's nobody in the driver's seat. Then you have what you saw, what you mentioned, ADAS, which is the driver-assisted version. That's in your personally owned vehicle. Historically, you would remember things like cruise control. You know, you go on the highway, you press a button, and maybe some radar will keep you some distance from the car in front of you. Those systems have become way, way more sophisticated, and they can change lanes, and they can take on-ramps and off-ramps. And kind of the most exciting part of the field right now is you're also doing that in urban environments. And so the concept of what the average person thinks of self-driving is finally getting into their day-to-day -day lives. Our version of that is we help all the auto manufacturers make those products a reality. Now, in another part of that conversation, I asked about the viability of the business model of some of these robo-taxis. We're seeing the likes of Waymo and some of the players in China. And Kassar Yunus was saying, well, whilst they are seeing revenue growth, the jury on profitability is, is still out, which is quite interesting. So there's two parts of the driverless equation that are happening right now. It's the push towards robo-taxis. Uh, and the second part is how automakers are trying to integrate some of these sort of partly autonomous features into their cars. And of course, robo-taxis, as we start and are about to talk about Tesla are a key part of that Tesla story going forward as well. And given Kassar Yunus is saying that the jury's still out on profitability, I think that raises a lot of interesting questions about the future of Tesla and uh, why people are so bullish on it, Ritika.